Good morning. Me again. Last video, we went over the reason for test crosses. If you missed it and need that info, click over here or use the link in the description. Up until now, for the sake of simplicity, we've been dealing only with completely dominant or recessive alleles. But in reality, not every allele behaves that way. So now, for the first time ever, we're going to look at two variations on the pure dominant recessive relationship namely incomplete dominance and co-dominance. Let's go back to the chromosomes for a second. Here we have an organism with two different alleles for the same gene, one dominant and one recessive. But what if both were dominant? Well, a few different things could happen, but in this case we observe an interaction between them of either co-dominance or incomplete dominance. This means that in a heterozygous individual, neither trait can mask the other, so both are expressed. The difference between co-dominant and incomplete dominant is exactly how they are expressed. Traits that are co-dominant both express fully, while incomplete dominant traits express as a blend of the two. Bit of a misconception out there, but co-dominant is not the same as incomplete dominant. Out in the reptile community, you'll see that plenty of breeders use the term co-dominant to label traits that are technically incomplete dominant. And honestly, I'm fine with that. But here, for science and accuracy, incomplete dominance will be incomplete dominance and co-dominance will be co-dominance. As for notation, there are a few different systems you could use. One way to do it is two letters, each with a different superscript letter. You use the same large letter to signify the gene you're working with and the superscript for which allele. This is really helpful when you're crossing for different genes at the same time. Example time. This is a genotypically normal boa constrictor imperator. And this is a boa that is heterozygous for what's called the jungle morph. The jungle allele contains a very neat mutation for color and pattern that is incomplete dominant to wild type. So this snake has one wild type allele and one jungle allele. Both of these are expressing themselves in this pretty blend that we see. The third possible genotype here is homozygous for the jungle trait, with two jungle alleles. Double the jungle and none of the wild type. As you'd expect, it has a much stronger expression of the jungle trait, and there's no wild-type allele to compete. So this snake is homozygous for jungle. Breeders label individuals like this as super. This is a super jungle. And the heterozygous snake is just a jungle. The jungle morph is truly an incomplete dominant trait, because it blends. What's cool about traits like this is you get a nice spectrum of expression, with wild-type on one end and the supers on the other. A heterozygote or super's place on the spectrum can vary depending on how strong that particular line of the jungle morph is. Because, like any trait, the expression of the jungle allele can be altered over time by selective breeding. Recap. Incomplete dominant. Blended expression. Co-dominant. Full expression of both. If you'd like to see some extra examples, click here for more. That's your intro to incomplete and co-dominance. Next time we'll start using them in crosses. Excitement! See you then, and good luck!